Do you like Jeeps and F units? I know I do. This is Burr Stewart and welcome to part 45 of my continuing operation series of videos about my HO scale Burlington Northern Railroad set in 1973 in the Seattle region. Today we're going to briefly look at a few operations that took place at a recent train day. It wasn't a full-on op session, but we were running some trains, and I thought you'd probably enjoy seeing them. It won't be that long, but we will get into some interesting things, like the wire nut method of operation that you see here. So, let's get started, shall we? The first thing we have to watch is a northbound train from Inner Bay up to Bellingham, which we had made up in the Inner Bay yard and contained four beautiful locomotives, a, a GP9, an F9, a second GP9, and a second F unit. The first two were painted BN green, which had happened to a number of locomotives after the merger. But of course, the following two locomotives hadn't been repainted yet, which is why I like to model 1973. It has such a variety of, we call them rainbow colors on the railroad. This section of main line is called the low line. It runs from Everett Junction north into Bayside Yard. And I inserted a bridge in the middle of this just to get the idea that it's along the coast. This lead unit is one of the Atherin Genesis GP9s from, I think, of about 2014 has this original Tsunami decoder in it and, of course, all incandescent lights. Now they're making locomotives with LED lights and I'll have to go back and replace them eventually. The lights, not the locomotives. These are great looking locomotives. This is your typical northbound manifest freight, although that lumber is, seems to be going the wrong direction. But we've got chemical cars going up to Vancouver, skybox or, or Boeing tool car. Uh, occasional piggyback car, chemicals, empty grain car, empty flat car for more lumber loading in the future. And that blue car comes from David Dwaron's layout in Phoenix, Arizona. These boxcars could be empty, going back for more lumber products, or they could contain something else. If you have insight into the traffic that flowed from the U.S. to Canada back and forth, please put it in the comments section below this video, what sort of commodities that would have been in boxcars and so forth. On the end of the train, we have a nice Overland Models brass prototype CB and Q caboose that was repainted for the BN. Don't forget your set out now. Yeah, I, I, I'm in, going in the side. Oh, you're going in the hole. I'm going in the hole. I know what I'm doing. Proper terminology. For our next little vignette, we demonstrate something called wire nut switching. The idea is that the two wire nuts represent the front and rear brakemen that are working with the locomotive engineer to get the switching work done. And as you can see here, one brakeman is riding the tank car in preparation for lining the couplers for a pickup. And the other one is still on the locomotive in preparation for setting any switches going the other direction. We'll do a more detailed demonstration of this in a future video. I just wanted to whet your appetite by showing you this silly looking operation. Four locos and 38 cars. The operator of this locomotive appears to have abandoned his road crew next to the bridge abutment there and is continuing this operation without them. If you're interested in wire nut operations, there's a good NMRAX video about it on YouTube. And you can also wait for me to release a future video where we'll demonstrate it more properly than we're doing here.
As you know, I am a fan of tank cars of all different sizes, shapes, and colors. So we're getting to play with a little bit of tank cars here. This GP9, by the way, we re-lettered in the same way that the Burlington Northern did to have its new number and the BN logo, or the letters, next to the cab. So this is a what I would call fully prototypical version of switching in Interbay Yard in 1973. You probably noticed that I haven't gotten around to renumbering and lettering all of the locomotives in the layout, but this is one that we have done. I can't decide which I like best, the locomotive or the tank cars. Or the great locomotive sound coming out of the Tsunami 1 decoder. Well, so much for that switching move. Hopefully he'll stop and pick up that crewman there before he heads off. But we're not going to wait and see because we've got another train to watch. This is train number 77. A westbound hotshot from Minneapolis heading towards Seattle and it's coming out of this Skycomish staging yard. The engineer Aiden is running it nice and slow, so we'll get to see all the details in the locomotives and cars as it moves down grade towards Everett. You probably recognize these as some F-45s that were the wide-body version of the SD-45s of the era, built in the late 60s. All three of these units are Athern Genesis products. A couple of them from the earlier runs, five or six years ago, and one of them, the one on the front, is from a recent run with the LED headlights. Your typical consist of logs, Boeing airplane parts, wood chip hopper cars from the sawmills in the Cascade Mountains, plywood cars, you name it. We've got a photographic challenge here because the train is making a U-turn on the index loop. You can see Mount Index painted on the backdrop there. And if I focus on the cars in the foreground, the locomotives are out of focus. And in a minute here I'll try focusing on the locomotives and then the cars in the foreground will be out of focus. Here we go. You can't win them all. Or maybe I should say it's a win-win situation where whatever I focus on, I like it. Now it's true that the Boeing 757 was not in production in 1973. I just had to say that before someone commented on it. Like I said earlier, you can't win them all.
Nothing wrong with that horn. These are very nice models. You can see the blue Great Northern BN Sky Blue locomotive is a little washed out, but it does have the correct BN number for that unit, 6606. That rock work is just extruded foam carved with a rasp and painted with white latex paint and stained with a little acrylic wash. And of course, this steel trestle is a micro-engineering kit. Well, for our last move of the day, we have GP9 number 1921, a Northern Pacific prototype, obviously. And we're just coupling up some cars, making up a eastbound train. That way we can conclude this brief video with an attempt at a bang. Bang. But actually it didn't quite couple. If we had just been using those wire nut brakemen, it probably would have. So anyway, we'll do that another time. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And until the next time, this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains. <laughs>